Hello everyone. In this video, I want to share some knowledge about how render thread and animation thread works in Unreal Engine and how to use them to take load away from the game thread. What you see on the screen is a tool called Unreal Insight that comes with Unreal Engine. It is located in the path where Unreal is installed. This is a performance monitoring tool that will show you everything that is happening when the game is running. Data we'll be using in this video is captured by running basic third-person template and Unreal Insight side by side. Once data is captured, this is how it will look like. If you ever wonder if Unreal uses multi-threading or how many threads it distributes the work into, these are all the threads that are spawned and are running in the background other than the game thread and rendering thread. I can scroll up to zoom into the data and scroll down to zoom out of the data. I zoomed in enough so that I can look at what's happening in a single frame. If we look at this section of the frame, rendering thread is trying to render while the game thread is actively taking player controller and character movement component which will update the character's transforms. If render thread reads the transforms of character while character movement component is changing those values, render thread will end up with garbage data. The usual go-to solution is to lock the actor while they update in the game thread so that the rendering thread will have to wait until the game thread will release the lock to continue. But based on how complex the scene gets, render thread will spend most of its time waiting on the game thread to release the resources so that it can render and this leads to increase in the frame times by two times or more. Unreal solves this by copying all the data from the game thread into the render thread at the end of the tick and before it starts rendering the scene. There are more nuance to this, but the simple explanation is when game thread finish ticking all the actors at the end of the frame 1, render thread will copy all of the data of frame 1 and the game thread will start working on frame 2, while render thread that has all the data of the frame 1 will use the data to render the scene. This is the reason why it's documented that render thread will always be one or two frames behind the game thread. Since game thread will be working on frame 2 while render thread works on rendering frame 1 onto the screen. There is one curious implication because of how these two threads work. If I delete an actor in game thread, the actor is marked to destroy but it never deletes immediately. This is because both game thread and render thread holds that actor. So when destroy is called on the game thread, it cannot immediately delete itself since render thread might still be working on rendering that actor. I can easily show this in action. This blueprint spawns an actor which is the cone that you see on the screen and waits for 2 seconds and destroy the actor. I added a print statement so that I can place a breakpoint. Then I delay until the next tick and have another breakpoint. When the first breakpoint hits, Destroy is already called on the actor, but the actor is still shown on the screen. This is because what is shown on the screen is previous frame. Actor disappears from the screen during the next tick because the render thread catches up to the game thread and knows about actor being destroyed, so it removes it from rendering it. So the garbage collector will wait until the render thread and all other threads are done with the actor and only when all the threads are done with the actor will the actor actually be deleted from the memory. Previously, I mentioned that there are more nuances to how these two threads interact with each other. It is easy to assume that both threads work in parallel and will finish working on the frame at the same time. Visuals I have shown until now does make it look that way. But in reality, they both work independent to each other. Let's look at some special cases to understand how some of these nuances come to play. Consider a situation where it's a minimalistic game with lot of actors and large amount of logic in them but are very easy to render. This is easy because when game thread is done with frame 1, render thread will render the frame 1 fast and will wait for game thread to finish calculating frame 2. And once game thread is done with frame 2, render thread will stop waiting and will render frame 2. In this case, the render thread will always be one frame behind game thread and the bottleneck is how fast the game thread is going.
Let's assume a situation where there is a lot to render like foliage and terrain etc. But not much is happening in logic side of the game thread. So render thread takes more than twice as long to render a frame than game thread takes to calculate a frame. When game thread finishes frame 1, render thread will start rendering the frame 1. By the time the render thread is finished with frame 1, game thread will already be done calculating frame 3. And render thread will start rendering frame 2. By the time frame 2 is done rendering, game thread is already at frame 5 now. And you can see how this is going to be a problem if render thread will keep lagging behind the game thread. In Unreal, the maximum amount of frames a render thread can lag behind the game thread is defined as 2 frames. In this situation, game thread being at frame 5 when render thread is at frame 2 breaks that threshold. So render thread will drop frame 3 and 4 and start rendering frame 5 instead. In summary, render thread will wait for game thread if game thread is slower. But game thread will not wait for render thread if render thread is slower. This is good because input gets processed on game thread even if the render thread is falling behind the game thread. So the game feels responsive to input rather than feeling like input processing is sticky. Unlike render thread that runs independent to game thread, animation thread runs in lockstep with the game thread. This means that during every tick, game thread will tick all the skeleton meshes in the scene and will launch animation threads for each of them. And game thread will wait until all animation threads finish their work and only then will game thread proceed to next frame. Usually in actual game where there are a lot of actors ticking and game logic running, Animation thread finishes long before the game thread does. So moving any load away from the game thread into the animation thread will help improve frame rate. Looking at Unreal Insight, it's clear that single animation tick happens in three stages. During the first stage, skeletal mesh tick happens on game thread. And at the end of this, it will fork out into its own thread. In second stage, separate animation thread does its work. And when it's done, it will join back into the game thread. In third stage, skeletal mesh does some work on the game thread before it finishes its tick for that skeletal mesh. Let's look at what kind of work is being done in each stage. Animation blueprint is divided into two parts. One is event graph and the other is anim graph. Event graph comes with update animation event that is called every frame. All the logic that is placed under this node runs on the game thread. This is the work that gets done during the first stage of animation tick. Anything that happens here contributes to the time that game thread spends on working. This does not run on separate animation thread. Second stage is the only work that is done on animation thread. Everything that is under anim graph happens in this thread parallel to game thread. But there is this one small section that says blueprint on animation thread. There is a less known function called thread safe update animation that gets called before anim graph is run to evaluate the pose. And the logic inside this function is what that section is all about. Since this function is called an animation thread, it is not safe to read the values directly from game thread. So instead, we have to apply what we learn from the render thread and copy the data that is needed from the game thread into the animation thread during the first stage. And then we can use that data inside this function in the second stage. Basic third person template comes with animation blueprint that looks like this. It gets the data from the character and character movement component, but also does all the calculations needed for the animation to work during the first stage itself. Instead, I will change this function to get the data needed and save the data into the variables inside animation blueprint. And inside the thread save update animation function, I'll use that data to calculate necessary values needed for the animation to work. This is how these two functions are intended to be used. Even though this is very helpful in taking load away from the game thread, this results in animation blueprint having lot of unnecessary variables, for example velocity variable in this case, that aren't needed to calculate the final pose and make animation blueprint very messy. To counter this, Unreal has a proxy structure that acts as a proxy between game thread and animation thread and can be used to hide away unnecessary variables and logic. 
This structure is called anim instance proxy. This is a C++ only struct at the time of recording. Setting this up is simple. I created a struct that extends from anim instance proxy and inside anim instance class, I overwrite create anim instance proxy and return the proxy local variable. Anim instance proxy comes with set of functions that can be overridden. On the screen are some of the important functions and which thread they run on and when they get called. I moved everything inside initialize animation function in the animation blueprint into initialize function of anim instance proxy. Then inside pre update of anim instance proxy, I get all the data needed and copy it into anim instance proxy local variables. In update, I do all the calculations needed and I copy the values into the variables that can be accessed in the anim blueprint. This isn't really necessary since anim instance proxy can be accessed inside anim blueprint. But I personally prefer to have variables separate than having to split the proxy struct which looks ugly. This is a very basic example of optimization, but moving any load away from the game thread into other threads will reduce the load from game thread. And the spare time on the game thread could be used to add more gameplay elements or actors into the game. If there are any notifies present in animations or montages that are being played, this node immediately gets called because we are still in separate animation thread. They are stored in the list of notifies to be triggered. And when animation thread joins back into the game thread during the stage 3, that is when all the notifies get triggered and depending on number of notifies and the work inside the notifies, amount of time game thread spends in this stage can vary from one frame to another. I have seen tutorials where line trace and shape traces are being done inside the notifies for sounds and particles and solving IK. I implore everyone to consider using asynchronous tracing for such things. Since all these traces are for cosmetic purposes and not gameplay critical, asynchronous tracing will give results in the next tick after physics update. So a delay of one frame to show cosmetics isn't a big deal. Early optimization is root of all evil. But I always recommend using low hanging fruits like anim instance proxy and using good practices that can make optimization down the line a breeze. It can be the difference from a code refactor taking a day versus spending months on refactoring and rewriting the systems. That is all I have for today. Thanks for watching.